Your age, your income, your gender, the things you like to share with your friends, the things you would like to keep to yourself, combined with the thousands of other data points, have become a trillion dollar savings account for the biggest tech companies in the world. And in the next five years, they are going to start making withdrawals. Facebook under mounting pressure to answer questions about how a data firm with ties to President Trump's 2016 campaign collected private information from more than 50 million Facebook users without their permission. Political campaigns want to advertise to voters in the most efficient way possible. General of Washington, D.C. filed a lawsuit Wednesday against Facebook over the Cambridge Analytica scandal. It's no secret that big tech companies have been collecting petabytes of data on every user they can lure onto their platform. I'm very concerned that the people that are spending most of the time right now speaking and focusing and thinking about big data are large companies and governments. And that's fine, but this is gonna affect our lives, our parents, our kids, and I think we should all be involved in this conversation right now. Big data has become one of the most attractive assets to investors. Companies like Snowflake, Teradata, and Palantir that do nothing but compile and manage billions of data points and turn them into useful information are worth billions of dollars. The data manager Snowflake was so attractive that they even got the legendary Warren Buffett to change his investing strategy around tech IPOs so he could include them in his portfolio. Those are just the companies that make sense of your data. The companies that can actually harvest it are worth trillions. And that's because your information is useful for so much more than just targeted advertising. Whenever we're online, information brokers collect our data and use it to assemble user profiles that can earn them a lot of money. Jeff Bezos may or may not be using Alexa to listen out for product recommendations. You should have a Sunday. But that's just the cherry on top of the big data Sunday. There are much more profitable business strategies used by the big data companies than using your data to recommend you a new toaster. Big data is becoming a new big oil because memory storage has become orders of magnitude cheaper. In the 2000s, big tech companies started to realize that their data would be highly monetizable through commerce and direct sales to third-party data brokers. So they started to collect as much as they could. But data brokers often take all the breadcrumbs that they have gathered about you, pair them with other data they can obtain, and then share all of it with businesses who want to market to you. And they will frame this as a win-win. Back then, high volume data center memory still cost as much as $10,000 per terabyte. And it was stored on highly inefficient hard drives. All web companies had to store some transactional user data like login information, names, account status, and everything integral to their service. The big data companies went further and took a chance by collecting thousands of other non-essential data points like how long users stayed on certain pages, what time of day people would interact with certain services, and what caused users to leave the platform. The business value of this data was obvious, but it was too expensive to store and compiling such large data sets into usable information would take weeks or months with the computers available at the time. The companies made the bet that storage would become cheaper and computer processing would become faster. And as it did, the data they were collecting would become proportionally more valuable. The companies that started earliest took the biggest risks, but they were able to build the biggest data moats. Right, so, you know, if you're a small new company and if you don't have any specific data sets, yeah, unfortunately, I think you are at a disadvantage. Investors love when a company is hard to compete with because competition leads to lower margins and greater risk of losing customers. Well. You made it, Peter. You're a big shot in charge of a whole bunch of people. The SEC and FTC make anti-competitive behavior illegal for companies. So the next best thing they do is build moats around their market. These are advantages to the incumbent market leader that any would-be competitor would have to overcome to start gaining market share. Detailed user data is a huge advantage for one company to have over another. Microsoft executives found that providing their business-to-business -business sales executives with detailed market analytics could improve their productivity by 30%. A new company looking for market share won't have any user data until they get users. And it will be hard for them to get users when they are competing against entrenched companies that already have user data. Tesla has a significantly higher earnings multiplier than legacy car brands because it made collecting driver data a priority, which is currently being used to develop full self-driving features. If Tesla never successfully implements autonomous driving, the millions of hours of driving data that it has stored could be sold to another automaker trying to develop self-driving. If Tesla doesn't want to sell its data moat, it could be used to make its cars better in other ways, like predicting driving habits to increase efficiency or charting out where to put new superchargers on the network. Anything to make it harder for other electric automakers to catch up. We have more data now than we've ever had before. We can understand real exposure 
and then we can design our vehicles for that exposure. Building a competitive moat to make it harder for startups to enter your market is just the first reason that data has become the new oil. Uh, we don't know anything about how, what Amazon or Google um, really does with their data. Um, we have to take their word for it. We, in fact, if anything, we sign away half of our rights to these data. So it's time to learn how many works to find out why your information has become a trillion dollar market. This week's lesson was sponsored by Guardio. Sometimes you give your data to these companies willingly and they turn it into billion dollar payouts. But sometimes people maliciously steal your most important information and take money right out of your pocket. But Guardio is here to help. Guardio is a browser extension that provides comprehensive online security features, including phishing protection and harmful site blocking. It also provides malicious extension protection and removal, search hijacker correction, and the blocking of dangerous downloads. The service also features information leak monitoring with real-time alerts for data breaches, as well as thorough cleanup of harmful and annoying pop-ups, enhancing your digital security and privacy. Perhaps you've noticed accounts of popular YouTubers being compromised and wonder why this happens. Many believe that two-factor authentication is sufficient for protecting their social media accounts. However, once malware infiltrates your computer, it can bypass all 2FA barriers and seize control of these accounts. These malicious programs often come from sources as commonplace as Google Ads, Facebook Ads, and even YouTube. Guardio's identity monitoring is cross-platform. If you sign up through mobile, you'll get real-time alerts if you have a data breach so you can take action immediately. Best of all, you can protect up to five family members with just one account for $9.99 a month. Get Guardio now and protect your online browsing and information. Avoid installing malware and falling victim to scams. And get real-time alerts when your information could be at risk. Sign up at Guardio forward slash money and save 20% on the monthly subscription. Data has become cheaper to store and it's also become easier to analyze. A decade ago, companies would need to build expensive in-house tools to analyze data and do anything useful with it. Developing software is time-consuming, expensive, and it needs to be maintained to keep up with other technologies. Many large corporations tried to build data management tools in-house, but most were clunky and slow, costing more than they ever earned in improved business operations. Large tech companies that already had experience building software were the only ones that got it right, and other companies were left using basic regression analysis done by teams of analysts to make use of their databases. It was a huge market opportunity that had been filled by third parties specializing in data analytics. Companies like Snowflake, Teradata, Amazon, Redshift, and Google's BigQuery will ingest a company's database and provide a range of tailored tools to quickly and intuitively work with the customer data they invested so much time in collecting. These services have a price range between $250,000 and $5 million per year, which is an insignificant investment for major companies that would have spent that much on internal tools anyway. In exchange, they get tools that are constantly updated and function as required. The customer turnover rates from the biggest data analytics providers is extremely low, which signals that the companies that work with them are satisfied with the results they provide. Modern tools are able to use technology like machine learning and advanced results-based algorithms to use data in ways that would never be possible with human intuition alone. The YouTube algorithm suggested this video to you because it knew you had an interest in finance and business. It knew that you may have watched my videos or videos like mine before. And when you did click on those videos, you watched them for longer than you watched videos on other topics. YouTube is an algorithm that is using the data at its disposal to deliver the result of maximum watch time on the platform. If YouTube gets more watch time, it can deliver more ads and collect more data. Advanced algorithms like YouTube's are now accessible to all companies that can afford the subscriptions to data service providers, enabling more companies to effectively cash in on their data. New tools can also help clean up messy data. Having a billion data points means nothing if it's not organized into a usable format. As companies migrated their data between different databases, formats would regularly be changed, lost, or duplicated. This made much of it unusable without having people go back through millions of entries and correct everything manually. Modern tools can fix a lot of these problems without human intervention, and make different data sources work together in one central database. The game developer EA gets data coming from Steam, Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, and their in-house distribution platform Origin. All of these platforms send user data back to EA in different formats, which makes using them together impossible without manually changing formats to play nice with one another or using a tool to do the same thing. EA actually uses Snowflake to monitor things like how long users play certain games, what modes create the highest player engagement, how to most effectively push microtransactions, and the right balance of skills-based matchmaking to keep giving players the right amount of dopamine. 
The driven algorithm that recommended you this video to keep you engaged with the YouTube platform is the same as the matchmaking algorithms that decide your teams in online games. They aim to keep you engaged by making sure you aren't winning everything and getting bored. But you are also not getting destroyed every round and rage quitting. In addition to improving user engagement and spending, using data can also help companies like EA cut down on costs by predicting server usage and only just having enough available to meet demand. You might hate them, but these tools make companies like EA a lot of money, and they have all been fine-tuned by mountains of data used effectively by off-the-shelf tools. If this so far has sounded a bit too big brother for your liking, it gets a lot worse. User data has become highly valuable, cheap to store, and easy to sell. In other words, it's pretty much become a new type of currency, one that is impossible to tax and can be spent as many times as the company wants. One of the most lucrative strategies to monetize this data is used by hedge funds. Hedge funds have been quietly buying consumer credit and debit card transaction data to monitor which retailers are outpacing or underperforming their earnings projections. The hedge funds will buy or short the companies ahead of public announcements, profiting off the shift in share price that follows these transactions. Transaction data providers charge millions of dollars a year for access to the real-time databases. Some banks sell this data directly through private agreements with hedge funds, and others go through service providers like Bloomberg Second Measure, which is a subscription on top of a regular Bloomberg Terminal subscription, which already costs $24,000 a year. Hedge funds will even pay a large premium to be the exclusive purchaser of customer data so that they can make profitable trades based on information that is technically public but nobody else has. Major hedge funds will also subscribe to multiple data providers to ensure they are getting a comprehensive overview of customer activity before even the companies themselves. It's not a strategy that is going to work for someone with a Robinhood account and a few thousand dollars, but it's been incredibly profitable for the firms that can pay to play. Hedge funds have some dirty tricks to generate big returns, but they have nothing on the guys that operate in the world of venture capital. But to find out how these guys still make money after investing into failure after failure, go and watch my video on what the f venture capitalists actually do. A special thanks again to Guardio for making it possible for everybody to keep on learning how money works.